All right. I don't know what happened with the rest, but I guess we can continue. So the first question here that come from the audience from a 65 years old mom and grandma here. How did you do on Friday? Friday? Oh, I did pretty good. 350. But I lost 150. That's really good for a day, right? But I lost 150. So 200. Net net 200 is still good, sir. Yeah, I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm that okay. Is, that is right. That is right. And uh, what's your uh, what's your net profit total like the whole week? Whole week was about well, I'd say about 300. 300 ish. Yeah, I think so. I think I started off with. 1100 something this week mm -hmm. so me i don't know maybe 500 i gotta look <laughs> all right that's good do you keep a, a lock like your trade no i just get the statements from ameritrade every month okay. then i just kind of review it all right so maybe a, a good suggestion to to keep up your your trade so i'm going to share with you Wow, where's my uh... hey you're using a think or swim right yes i am man i gotta use that thing i i downloaded it but i don't know how to use it so yeah there's a lot of customization that i do with this charge um so especially this ttm squish uh i do the take the, the take is normal default um yeah, there's there's a lot of I I do enable the volume correlation and all that stuff. Uh, there's a couple things that I want to do like a monkey bar, but I haven't got a chance to do it. So I'm waiting a new computer that I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna buy because this computer has been like what uh, 2013. Yeah, it's been like almost like six years now. Oh, still kicking. No, it is still good. I only use it for trading only. Oh, nice. Hey, by the way, how did you do on Friday or this week? Uh, this week, so good question. Let me take a look here on my notes. I know I lost money on NEO, but I haven't sold that. So that's a long term. That's a minus, uh, I would say about 700. But I do uh, well on gold. S O H, uh, I'm sorry, S O X S, which is the the semiconductor inverse, three time bear. That one is total four hundred sixty, and then I also have the W T W trade. That one hasn't made money yet because I just entered on Friday. Let me see what else I have. I'm opening my my notes here. Uh, SPY is a break even. I did the call on Friday. I, I mean, I'm sorry, on Wednesday. That was a break even trade. Um, the SPY and the FE. That one is a new GE. That was from last week. So I think. Total net net, it's I'm still losing a little bit, but it's unrealized. So, but the profit itself that's already realized is about four hundred sixty dollars. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, so not too bad. I mean, I know Neo is going to be a long term trade, so I'm just going to keep piling on as it's going down, and then just hedge it as it as it goes up. So. All right. Yeah, I think my worst trades this week would have to be Afria. Afria. Um, it's a cannabis stock, but I I got really lucky because I was able to sell or I was able to limit my loss because I was down like three hundred in the beginning of the week with that mm -hmm. stock, but then it jumped back, and then right after it jumped back. 
I sold and I still took a loss, like a hundred loss. So I could move it into Neo that day because I think it was moving, but then I ended up losing Neo too. But it, I looked up because that was when the guy resigned the commission. Mm. And then that's when all the cannabis stocks just, you know, went down. Yeah. Yeah. I, so think, I, could, have lost, I could have lost way more. I think it might possible we're going to be on site way or going down more. Um, Let's take a look at the MVFD here because this is like, this is something that I have on in position right now. Um, Which stock? The the new H beverage. Oh, M M Bev. Okay. Yeah, M Bev. So if you look at the 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 chart itself, we just broke the support right here, the trend line support. Yeah, yeah. So there's 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 more room basically to go down here to the three dollar area. Which is you can see on the left side, there's a lot of support on that side, or it might be also go down to the two dollar and fifty cents. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. So it, it's it just a matter of um, time, but um, if cannabis is whoever the new FDA uh, that will be appointed and they okay with this, I think the stock will keep going up again. So it's just a matter of time, but if it's gonna go up and it broke this 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 broken support before, I probably is gonna go to the back channel right here about eight dollar fifty each, and then it keep going up, right? So it's just a matter of time. Where is it going up, or is it gonna be sideways, or, or going down? Okay. Yeah. But if this stay right here, the three dollar fifty, so this is considered as a blue flag. Because the support here on the last break, a break right here, the resistance mm -hmm. is still intact. That's the okay. dollar right here. So let me put the let me put the alert here before I forget. Right. So yeah, the cannabis is just a matter of you know the, the trend, right? If if it's hot, then people are will go in. But I think right now in this week or this month, there's a lot of bias, biotech stock that are basically doing a lot better than cannabis. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, um, before we jump in too much here, I just wanna go over the homework. Jason, since you're the first attendee. Oh wait, Andy's calling me. I, I gotta come back, Andy's calling me. Oh no. All right, I'm just gonna have to do my homework then. No, I'm I'm just I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know. I I, I haven't. <clears throat> I I usually do that homework anyways. I usually review stocks <coughs> every day. <coughs> right. So it should be an easy one for you then. Let's pick a song. So what do you Amazon. want to do? Amazon. All right. Yeah. <coughs> it was hovering around. Well. Support seems to be 1700, resistance. I mean, resistance 1700, support 1600, and I got in at 1600. Okay, you got, you got support <coughs> at 1710, right? So let's yeah. set up an alert there. And then your last support that is hold here, it's around 15, <coughs> 76 to 80, right? And it's making a uh, high and low, if you can see that. This one, it was 1566. And Amazon basically on Friday did not go all the way that down. Yeah. So we're making a high and low here. As long as this stay high and low, I think the stock has a uh, potential to go up. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. And if not, I'll watch it for the first couple minutes. If if it starts dropping, I'll sell it already. Cause I already made my one percent. Okay, you already have what your one percent. Yeah. No, which is good. I think there's a lot of interest on this, especially uh, when he was broke down, and then now he's making a comeback. I mean, a lot of stuff on Friday it become bullish at the end of the day, right? So. Um. Let's let's take a look here. So if we look at here, this is the lower trend channel, right? 
did I do here? Click, click, click. All right. So if you see this, this is the last down trend channel, right? Or we can call it the downtrend line. And you can see right there too. We can make it as a channel. And then it broke up and then it went sideways. So this is this is a bullish right here. This is a bullish flag right here. Bull flag. As long as this 1566 stay and hold, this thing can go. Okay, if the market on next week, because next week is a big day, as usual, at the end of the first quarter of, of 2019. Well, not, not at the end, but it's any anything with March 15, February, like whatever the last, the first three weeks, that's called an option expiration. There's gonna be a lot, a lot um, movement basically on those week. So let's take a look at this trade right here. I wanna see where's Amazon. We're also doing a, a research here. Just, just understanding like, hey, where is, this is all option right here that will expire on March 15. Hmm. Okay, there's a lot of, there's a, about $51 movement. $51 movement between um, next week, the end of, uh, between Monday to the end of next week, right? So you gotta have to see like, okay, there's a lot of option uh, volume on 1600, which is 2600 right there. Somebody purchase that or somebody sell it, right? And then there's also uh, 1630, 1640, and then 1650. Okay, and then there's also right here on the top, right? 1670, 1675, and then the lower end, which is the 1600. So it seems like it's more heavy on the upside, more volume rather than on the downside, right? The put, this is the put oh. side. This is the call side. The call means there's a lot of people are leaning on the bullish side. This is a lot of people leaning on the bearish side, right? But it cannot be a hundred percent true until we look at the, the the trade. What's going on 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 Friday? This is a lot. This is all the transaction that happened on Friday. So I have a criteria here that basically above eighteen contract and and all the way unlimited is basically that's the filter. So 1605, 1667, this is a spread, so that's not a bullish. 1800 put and 1810 spread. That's, that's, this is bullish right here. Because this guy is selling the 1800 and buying the, the 1810. Or selling the 1810 and buying the 1800. This is very bullish, 1800, that's like 200 point more. All right, we'll take a look on yeah. this. Last year. This is something off right here. This trade is somebody just doing a 140 spread right there. It's a lot of money. Price is 186, price is 196. This could be someone is basically that was down um, under the water basically. They might be bought the stock back back in the day when it was eighteen hundred. Mm. So they basically kind of selling it the put now. So we'll see. We'll we'll take a look. So take a note there. Um, we see seventeen hundred, seventeen hundred, right? And then the rest is just a smaller amount here. So let's take a look at the seventeen hundred here. Is the beauty with the with this option you can see all this stuff Ooh, 1700 is a long way okay we have 3000 volume right there this is good to know all right so now if we look at that oops i don't mean to drop to the top there you go so i can use the chart 1700 yep so the, in the top resistance right there right uh -huh. So this guy is basically expecting the stock will go up here, back to the resistance again. How do I draw this? I, just, I don't have the, the triangle, but anyway, it's expecting to go up back to the to the upper 
upper res resistance right here. So this is good. This is bullish right here. So we have to see. We have to see. I probably want to jump in this trade as well on on next week. Oh, Amazon. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, this is this is a perfect trade right here. Uh, low, right? You're making a high and low. Um, so there's a lot of tr a lot of option trade right here. They're expecting seventeen hundred. So we can follow that trade. Now. What else do I want to see from this? I mean, there's nothing much to draw here because it's just on the bullish sideway, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look on the left side. We have 17, 69, right? That was also the other range right here. Oh, this is a good one. So what I can do is, if you see this, this is also another range right here, right? Now I can duplicate that and then I can drag that to between where's the number here? 1630 1550 to 17. So it's a hundred more points basically. So somewhere there. around this area right there. So 1700 to 1750 that's the target right there if we want to follow from the left side okay yeah because you can see right there there's a, there's a resistance there there's a resistance there again if 1700 break right here from this um 1710 break then the target the next target is 1769 yeah yeah So forget your one percent. I mean that that's kind of more than one percent. Okay, good finding on Amazon. Yeah, man. Uh, All right, what else? Good. Is anybody else in here? I don't think so. They're probably still sleeping. Okay, let me look at my watch list. I mean, shoot, I've been working on Square, Etsy. I like Square. I saw, this, I saw this guy on Friday here. It was it wasn't go down all the way to the sixty eight, but it goes to the seventy something, seventy eighty. Yeah, yeah. And then on Friday it goes up again. But I think I think right here it depends on the squish, right? If this guy can go up, then it will create a new bullish trend right there. Okay, I'm gonna look this guy too because I've been eyeing on this. So I'm gonna mark on the low on Friday. And then change this to 70, 80. Oops. <coughs> okay, that's not 70, 80. What is the low here? See, I caught your guy's bug here in Hawaii. Oh no. Sick. Blame on Irene. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so replace 70, 16, whatever the, the low was on Friday. <clears throat> and then I want to see if it's about these two triangle right here, or two lines, 76. Maybe it will go up back to the 80s. Yeah, so that's, that's a square. Now EA, I like EA a lot right here. I mean, this stock is making a very good um, on Thursday. So we're gonna wait another squish here. If it does break, then I would say 105 easy. Let's take a look at the option here on this guy. March 15 EA. I prefer to go EA rather than square. Uh, all right, so 100, 105. So those two are a big volume right there, 2300. So let's take a look if um, <clears throat> if it's a bullish uh, indicator that people are buying or is it selling? So I know for sure this is a bullish right here. Automatically, I know that's. People are buying 300, 300, 174, 154. 
Um, this one is running my instance. Yeah, that's a powerful tool, being able to see what people are. Yeah, this is the, the trade that was happening on Friday, right? So you should be able to see the history. That's why I, I prefer this this one rather than trading view. I mean, trading view is great for, for the for the uh, technical chart, but um, you're not gonna get all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So 100, let's take a look at 100 here. This guy's a buying on the ask. 138 140 right so he's buying it close to close to closer to the end of the um the market close 1258 right there so 186 134 so this one he got it on the bid 156 on the ask uh yeah no this is perfect even though even though it's gonna be um you know, a hundred that's still like 98, 90. So it's like a dollar fifty. So EA can move fast here on this guy. But let's take a look at the chart here. So it's still bullish, right? From that up move and then sideways. I'm still hoping to go down to this line right here, this red line, which is the upper, the lower of the trend channel. And then I'm gonna buy and then hope going up to 150, which is this area as well. But it's, I don't think it's gonna happen, so I'm just gonna maybe buy a three contract right here, and then if it go down, buy another one, and then I'm hoping the target is around these areas. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Heather uh, liked this chart as well, so this is where I'm hoping to to buy right this red channel here, or maybe I can change it to. To the green channel or something whatever or the blue channel okay that's where i want i'm expecting to buy 89 to uh somewhere around 93. unless it's gonna keep going sideways then it's gonna go up to this side and then it's gonna go up to 107. 108 was the last high so yeah this is a good stock i like the stock i think that new game will do well um, I already make about four hundred eighty dollar with them. So wait, no, should be more. Should be six hundred, two hundred on on uh, Robinhood and four ninety on the on the uh, E trade. So six hundred and eighty somewhere around that. So hopefully I can make more. Hopefully we are around like two grand somewhere with this stock. So. All right, so that's EA. Um, we did Amazon, Square, EA. Where's my list? I made a list already. Oh, right here. Um, do you have WTW? Uh, I haven't been watching that lately. Oh, I thought you were, really... you were selling the spread as well. Oh, I think my spread expired. And, and I do have the other one, the most recent one. Let me see. Robin Hood. So, if you do, I mean, if you don't, that's fine. But if no, you I do, don't. like Mary does, I have, I have this, and then I buy more on Friday. Um, so I'm buying like twenty call on strike twenty twenty one. So that's like almost two years. Right, I'm hoping, or I am thinking, because I have been looking the OI as well here. There's a lot of people are basically on the 19 October or April. So 22 and a half, 22 and a half there's a lot of people are buying volume right there. So I'm hoping by April, this stock can make a move right there to the upside. I mean, I'm not expecting going back to 30, but at least it's going to go to 22 uh, and then 24. That's where I'm going to sell my um, my call that I bought on Friday. Now, in terms of the spread, the spread is basically 1917, and we basically still holding this. Um, I'm super confident. I think that we will 
we will it will expire worthless next week. So if the market go up, start grinding, go up, this guy will keep going up as well, right? If not, then I will adjust this back to April. So the reason I pick April going back again, based on this volume, right? It's on the 22 and a half. So, so at least that will give me a month, 30 days to roll over. Then I will collect more premium every time I roll over. So if I basically pull, oh, this one doesn't have a 19. So crap. So I have probably have to pick the, the 12 or the 26 then. Now, if I roll over to the seventh, uh, I'm sorry, to the April 26, I will be collecting around 69 cents. Right now at Robinhood, the one I have is about 35 cents. So I will collect about 30 cents more times 10, which is another $300, which is good. So we'll see. Okay. That will be another way to adjust your position if it's against you, right? You have a credit put spread, then you just roll over to the next month or another two months or another week. It, it depends. You have to do your research, right? So you know that it will go down and then it will go back up again. That it will expire worthless. Then you will collect the whole premium. All right, so that's for a WTW. Uh, so 22 and a half. Oh, okay, so in April, somebody expecting to go up back here again to this resistance, the last high, right? So I'm going to put the mark here. Okay. All right. Other than that, Neo, uh, Facebook on my list. I like this stuff. I don't know what happened, but this past three days, right? Yeah. Just like keep going up on a good volume. So this is a good stock. I was chasing this and I did not get it. I did not get it. And I was like, oh shit. You know what? I'm not going to chase it anymore. And then of course the market pull back, right? <laughs> so which is good. I think it's a good thing because I expect the market to pull back. That's where I'm making money on gold and, um, uh, uh, the semiconductor in first semiconductor. So yeah, so th this is gonna be a good stock. I think it's been punished a long time Now it's start going back. It's holding the gap fill here 150 So it's just being a good stock right now. It break a new high 172 So we'll, we have to see this this line right here 172 break. I think 175 it's coming and then it can go up to 180. Let's let's take a look on the left side here. What do we have on the left side? Uh, this is the last one, 187. Oh, this is a good one too. So 187 is also a good target. Uh, let's say this one, 180. 180 is a good one. So 180 first before 187, right? Yeah, no, this is good. So I like this stuff. Especially with that big volume, so you know, somebody knows something. <clears throat> Let me see, one sixty nine. Yeah. Now, earning earning is going to be April twenty four, so it's still a long term, a long long time, right? So I'm not worried. I'm hoping the stock will keep going up to that mark to that month, which is another um, another month, more than a month, and then after that, the earning goes bad, and then it will collapse again if that will be the scenario. So another way to do it is calling uh, by selling the spread here. But I'm still expecting the market still pull back though, just just looking at the overall of the market. Um, uh -huh. Right here, let's go here. So. The market as a whole or just Facebook? No, market, uh, market as a whole. So okay. the reason why we bounce is because we have a gap fill here. You probably don't see it here, but on the um, stock chart here, let me pull that. We have a gap fill 
that was Phil on Friday. That's why people are buying because one is an oversold. If you look at the um, the William R. Can you see my screen on this one? Yes. yes. Okay. See right there. It's holding the 200 MA on Friday. It broke a little bit. Fill up the gap, the gap right here. You see that the, the black triangle right there? There's a gap right there. Right here, this guy. Oh wait, it did not fill the gap on this chart. That's weird. Okay. This one, maybe it's XPX. I swear I look at the, come on. There's a gap fill on my um, on my mobile phone. Let me take a look at my mobile phone here. X. Why do it's giving me XPXC? Uh, this one XPX. There you go. Now this one almost. Okay, if I'm looking at my mobile phone. Oh, it did not, it did not fill the gap. Okay, I guess I was wrong. So, it did not fill the gap um, on on SPY, but I guess it held the five, uh, the 200 MA, the moving average. That's where, because this is very powerful. That's why a lot of people are watching this level. I think we're gonna have a, uh -huh. a move up day next week with a small pullback back and forth to this. So, yeah. If it keep going down, I would say right here, 267 and 270 as a gap fill. That need to be done. That need to be filled. It doesn't have to be filled, okay. but that would, be my, that would be my projection if it's gonna keep going down and then it will stay on this level right here. All right, so um, looking at QQQ, just NASDAQ, right? Because Amazon is on this guy, it broke the the, the two hundred MA, so that's not good. Um, if we can recover, then we need to recover fast on next week. Because otherwise, um, they're gonna be opening up more, uh, going down to one sixty six right here. As this blue line will going up as well. The MACD, the MACD is still uh, it's showing down here. RSI is basically back to neutral, right? On the uh, William R, that's the indicator that I use, it is showing oversold, uh, uh, a short-term oversold territory, right? Um, uh -huh. You can see right there is bounce. So. Hey, sorry, what, what's that website again? You're looking at the William R? The stock chart? Yes. So. Stockjar.com. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. So that's that's a good indicator on Friday, basically. It oversold, start people start coming in and buy. So Okay, gotcha. All right. So that's pretty much I have. Um so next week I'm gonna look Amazon, Facebook, Square. Um, Neo, I did not get feel on that on that limit. Uh, WTW, I'm gonna look at um, if it's gonna against me, then I'm gonna adjust that. If not, I'm gonna let it expire and collect the two hundred dollar credit. So, how do you feel about like semiconductors? Uh, it was it was going down pretty good. Um, 
semiconductor is one of the indicator as an overall market. So I always look at IWM and uh, semiconductor at first. So if this guy keep going up, so that's mean a lot of people are very, very bullish on the market. Okay. So I bought the inverse right here. And then on Friday, I sold it. Here. So I'm going to let until this thing up again, and I'm going to see where is it going. Is it going to go a break or is it going to keep going down again? So, um, yeah, overall market, I think um, this guy get punished first if it's going down. The same thing with IWM. There you go. I've been... I've been watching for a while, like AMD, um, NVIDIA, yeah. and Intel. And it seems like they get very affected by the whole tariff news thing. That's why I kind of stay away from those, especially NVIDIA. Oh, Micron too. If you look at Micron, Micron is um, also... Oh, um, you, yeah. yeah, they're looking at the global sales, right? Micron is basically... Um, not doing well so they have an earning coming up in march 20 this will tell okay. us if the market slowed down or not the global market if it does then the semiconductor will get punished more okay and video is basically it's already overbought from a while back right if you look at the monthly chart look at that Woo! Just like a rocket. Anything that go up so fast is gonna go down fast too, right? You have to understand that. So that's why I don't recommend it to chase unless you only do a day trade. If you keep holding it for a long term, my gosh, this thing can go down fast too. It's just a matter of time because why a lot of analysts, which is those people that doesn't know what they're talking about, they always want to find a cheaper way to buy the stock. If it go up a lot, they're gonna downgrade it. So, and then, oh, I'm gonna buy more. So that's how they do it, you know? Yeah, at one point they were saying, oh yeah, 400 estimate. Then yeah. like, a week or two after they said that, it started going down. That's when yeah, it started of course. taking that crap. Yeah, because why? They, they're making that comment because they wanna drive all the retail people like you and I that doesn't know anything about chart, but they're looking at, oh my gosh, NVIDIA is doing well. I think it's gonna keep going up to 400. I'm gonna follow, I'm gonna buy. But when they buy, that's where people are selling. Remember, the stock is always yeah. buy and sell, right? When you're buying, there has to be someone else on the other side that is selling. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, so I guess that's kind of my take on semiconductor. Um, if you want to just, I'm not trading Micron. I think Micron for me is a bad girlfriend because I've been trading with them a couple times. Um, I mean, it was down. I, I, I lost money on Micron and then I did the refense trade. I make money. So for me, it's like, oh, Micron is just a stay away. Yeah, okay. I don't trade uh, NVIDIA. I think the stock is way too expensive. Um, I'm hoping it's going to keep yeah. it down. So I think this is just uh, overbought um, from a while back. So they're working on it. But as long as they can keep 125, this stock has potential to go up, right? To repair to 200, and then it might be just sideways from there. Yeah, we have to see like how's their 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 earning well or their earning doing, and also how the whole tariff will impact them overall. Or not so. I'm surprised like Apple, Apple. Too. I think Apple will also get impacted by the tariff. So. Yeah, they've been taking a hit. Yeah, I think they will. They will do more taking a hit, because. They're not making a new invention. They just basically, oh yeah, we have this <coughs> same thing. 
but I guess they have a lot of money, so they can always buy a new company to expand. So, all right, what's their market cap now? Um, they're like a, a trillion, I think. Or maybe they're below now because the stock goes way that went down from the two hundred something is right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm gonna keep it sweet and short okay. here. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you already done your taxes or not. I haven't done my taxes, so I gotta focus on that today. Yeah, man. Okay. All yeah, right. Thank you for your time, man. No, no problem. So I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know once this is uploaded to YouTube. Okay. Sounds good. Right. Enjoy your weekend. Have a good weekend. Bye. You too.